Yeah, let's go. Twenty seconds, okay. It actually says live, but yeah, it's seven, so we'll just start. Hi, hello, I am Atmar de Bruin. Um, today we're going to look at heat sources and there's a little bit of extra in kettles. Uh, this is going to be a live call, so I'll be just talking. You can put stuff in chat, but I encourage you to uh, keep the questions till the end. Um, I have uh, practiced this and it, it's around 30 minutes, give or take. I might speed things up a bit uh, when it's live than in rehearsal. Um, yeah, let's just get started right away. Um, first with a disclaimer um i i actually am a sort of technical person and i like to quantify things but with these heat sources i cannot give you like examples of studies that have been done um i would like to but i don't have them so what i would suggest is to take this information as just a random dude on the internet uh, telling you which is his personal top five six of heat sources and uh, just leave it at that. Um, I am going to talk about water uh, in particular. Um, and again, this is hard to quantify. If you put two apples beside each other, I could tell you which one is sweeter. But if you put two waters beside each other, um, it gets a bit vague, like the one is more sparkly and maybe the other one is a bit more bitter. So my language isn't up to par yet uh, to talk about water that much. I'll try my best, but again, um, I would like to uh, be more clear and I'm trying to, but uh, you'll have to uh, take my word for it. Um, I'm gonna rank these heat sources from the lowest to, uh, and the last will be the best heat source. Um, I will rank these only on water quality. There's a lot of different stuff going on that I will tell about. I like to be practical, so I'll give practical advice as well. And um, one thing as well, uh, I do a lot of tea ceremonies, um, so tea in silence, uh, which is a very good um, training to actually get um, sort of uh, uh, sensitive enough to notice the differences. And if you put me uh, with uh, two of these heat sources, I don't know, five years ago and said, this one is better than the other and let me taste, I would be a, at a loss. I would be like, I don't taste the difference. So it is... Um, dependent on your situation, if you're just drinking tea uh, in front of the television and enjoy that, and I do as well, uh, I drink tea at uh, behind my desk for work, um, then you don't need the best heat source, you don't need the best kettles, uh, just have some tea. So take everything into consideration uh, with what I share here. Um, yeah, so that is... Um, the first part done. Um, let's get right into the first one. Let me have some tea first. I hope you, you have tea as well because I'll be drinking uh, some tea during this call. So the first one that we have is um, actually a tie, so last place. And let me remind you that last place in this list is still good. Um, there are way worse ways on um, heating your water. You, I don't know, burn some plastic or something and the smoke will get everywhere and that's not good. So even these are last place, they're not horrible. Well, there's actually one, but I'll, I'll get to that. So last place is um, induction heating and electric kettles. I have an electric kettle right here. This one is actually pretty nice, um, but I grouped these two together. I don't have an induction burner. Um, yeah, induction is weird. It has um, um, it works with waves, uh, heats up metal, and then uh, heats up your water. And I don't know exactly what's going on. And again, I would love to quantify this and have uh, uh, some tests done, but um, it, it feels a little bit burnt. And I think that it heats the water so fast that uh, part of the water is overboiled and the rest of the water isn't boiling at all yet. So you, you get this weird mixture of overboiled water and normal water. Um, electro kettles sort of have the same thing going on in that they heat the water super fast, um, which is also a plus, you know, heating water fast is nice to have. Uh, they're very convenient. Um, 
the the part that I really don't like about electric kettles is that a lot of them have plastic in them. Uh, they are either uh, made entirely of plastic, which is a it's a big no no. Um, plastic is an unstable molecule. We'll get into the water. There's this plasticky taste uh, in it. So try and get a stainless steel kettle. I used to have a glass kettle, uh, a glass electric kettle. Um, I wouldn't recommend those either. Uh, I will get into glass uh, in a moment with the kettles. Um, but try and get a stainless steel kettle and also look inside the kettle. This kettle still has some plastic in it. If you look over here, there's this view window where you can see how much water is in the kettle. I think you can see it. Yeah, it's right here. Um, that is plastic. So there's still some plastic in this kettle, but most of it is stainless steel. So it is... Uh, actually pretty good. If I put induction and electric kettles beside each other and um, uh, only use stainless steel, uh, the stainless steel electric kettle is going to be better than induction. But because of the existence of plastic kettles, I group them together as both being, yeah. So um, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, so they don't make the best water. Uh, they're both pretty fast induction and um, electric kettles and the good thing about it also is availability you can get uh, electric kettle anywhere and induction heaters are pretty easy to come by uh, like the small units like uh, one that I have here it, this is not induction this is actually the next one let's get straight into that one uh, next one is uh, infrared this is an infrared plate um, if you look at it uh, let me see if I can yeah so it's just a black disc with um, where if I turn it on, it will glow red. Can you see it on the camera? No, not really. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it should light up red. Then you know it's an infrared and not an induction burner. And if you um, look for these things online, be very wary. Um, most of these things have fans in them. And like I said, I'm doing a lot of silent tea ceremonies and having a fan whirring in the background, most of them are pretty loud as well, um, is not something good. And uh, I've had multiple of these that said they're either silent fans or most of them don't even have uh, a description that there's a fan in them. So be very wary. This is a Klarstein brand. I think it's Captain Cook or something. It's it's on my website, um, but you can basically find it anywhere. Uh, this one doesn't have a fan at all. It's passively cooled, uh, which is very nice. So get either this one or I would suggest nothing at all. I, I haven't seen, um, well, actually I had, but that's not on the market anymore. Uh, and I've, I'm looking, I am. So get this one or one that looks similar like this one. In USA, they have different brands. I think it's, um, Vita or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. But um, these actually make pretty good water. Um, it's a, a big step up. Uh, well, actually not a big step. It's a small step, but it's a step up. Uh, the nice thing about it is that um, with this uh, and with the induction, which, which I haven't told you, you're also limited by using metal in your, um, in your kettles. Uh, this one, you could basically use any kettle. Uh, there are obviously some exceptions. Uh, but you can use all different um, uh, kettle materials on there. Um, you just need an outlet uh, where you can plug it in and you're good to go. Uh, the downside is, is these are pretty slow compared to other methods. Uh, the electric kettle would be, I don't know, half a liter in maybe a couple of minutes. Uh, and this one would probably take double. So it is slower, but then again, it's, it's actually pretty nice. And I use it a lot. But uh, we'll get to that. Let me take a sip. So the next one is gas. And let me see if I can get things out of the way and grab my little gas stove. Here we go. Um, this is a small gas stove, which I uh, primarily use when I go outside. Uh, these actually accept gas canisters um, that you put in here. 
uh, these are actually really good. Uh, this is also the first method which, you, which uses an actual flame. So there's an actual flame heating the kettle. Um, and I don't know why, but it just heats the kettle better. Um, and even if you put uh, uh, the same kettle uh, on a gas and on an infrared, pour it into a glass, uh, the one which is from gas or from real flames um, will steam more. I don't know why that is. I would love to know. If someone knows in chat, please let me know. But um, yeah, it just makes better water. Um, the downside is, is that it's not really environmentally friendly. Uh, this one takes canisters, uh, which are, you know, consume once and then throw away, which is not really nice. Um, I also have uh, my, my stove in the kitchen. It's also gas powered, uh, which is nice. Uh, but the downside is, is that I'm living here in the Netherlands and we, um, uh, they get the gas from a province and people people's houses are sort of sinking into the ground, which is not nice. So I don't like to use gas because I live here. Um, if you live somewhere else and you have a nice clean gas source, I would definitely recommend using it. They have these um, uh, canisters, they're a bit bigger uh, that you can refill, uh, which are actually pretty nice to use. So uh, yeah, use that if you're, you have that available. Um, yeah, and what I also, uh, what's also very nice about gas is that it's really fast. So it's um, slightly slower than an electric kettle, but it is, uh, yeah, really fast. So if I need two infrared plates to keep uh, a reasonably sized tea session going, I only would need one uh, gas uh, platform. It will be enough. So that's always so nice. Um, now we get into the next one, which is a bit of an intermediate. Uh, it's a weird one because uh, all of these before, uh, you could heat your water from zero degrees or room temperature to 100 and per be perfectly fine. And the next one is alcohol. I don't have alcohol here, um, but this is an alcohol burner. Uh, it's a small one. You put alcohol in here and then you, uh, you light the wick and it will keep like this big of a flame. Uh, nice thing about it is that you have the flame element going on. So it's basically uh, the same as gas that in that you have a flame, but um, <laughs> this is not going back again. Okay, nice. In that you have a flame, but now you only use a small amount of alcohol uh, to put in here. So now I can heat my kettle over uh, my infrared burner then transfer it to, uh, obviously this needs a whole setup where I can put the kettle on. Um, then I transfer it to my alcohol burner uh, to just keep it warm. So it's already boiling and I'll, I'm just keeping it warm. So I have the advantages of uh, the uh, infrared in that it's easy to use. I could do it anywhere. And I'm not using any uh, natural resource. Um, but then again, I am using alcohol, but just a very small amount. You just need small amounts for one session. Like this one, uh, if I fill it up, I could do maybe three sessions of, of an hour and a half. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the downside is, is that you need alcohol. Uh, we as humans, uh, love to drink alcohol. Uh, I'm not personally one that uh, does that a lot, but, um, the problem is, is that in Europe, uh, there's a lot of taxation about alcohol. And if you want to buy a liter of alcohol, or at least here in the Netherlands, you need to uh, pay a lot of tax. So one liter of pure alcohol, which is also drinkable, of course, uh, costs 35 euros or something. Um, what every country does is they will make, the, they denature de it. So they put stuff in it so you cannot drink it anymore. So it will be either very bitter or uh, actually poisonous which uh, brings in a whole slew of different problems because now you have stuff uh, in the alcohol burner, which is not pure alcohol, uh, which can uh, create a lot of soot, create smoke, create smells that you don't want in your tea. Um, so it's actually a bit of a, a thing to find nice, good quality alcohol, which is uh, denatured so that it uh, costs less, 
but um, doesn't have things in it that will blacken up your kettle or create a lot of smoke or a lot of unpleasant uh, smells. So that is the downside of it. I do know of uh, a store here in the Netherlands. It's an outdoor store where you could buy uh, specialized alcohol for burning. Um, I don't know how it is in the rest of Europe or where you live. I would love to do a website one time where people could just post that. Like, yeah, I got nice alcohol for tea uh, right here so that every country has its own list. Um, yeah, it's something that it's on my backlog, but uh, maybe I'll get to it soon. Uh, but yeah, this, this makes good water, so do it. And the next one, we're already at uh, the final one. Where did I put it? And the best one by, by far is charcoal. Uh, this is just a small burner. Um, you can basically use it the same as you would an alcohol burner in that you only, uh, with this one, you only use a small amount of actual charcoal. Uh, you heat your uh, kettle, uh, yeah, your kettle to 100 degrees somewhere else, uh, and then you transfer it on this one. It will keep it warm, and it will give you most of the advantages of using charcoal. In that, it's it's uh, yeah, it's actually hard to quantify, but um, it seems that the water is hotter, um, and it seems more, uh, especially with tea, it penetrates more and deeper into the tea. Uh, of course, don't take my word for it. Uh, try for yourself uh, and see if you can notice a difference. But um, yeah, it is very noticeable. It is, yeah, by, by a long shot, the best uh, um, way of heating your water for the water quality. But it's also, like everything else, is, is pretty, pretty hard because now you need to tend your charcoal fire. And these things are easy in charcoal world, but still these can go out if you don't tend them. You need to stir the charcoal a bit because there's ash uh, on there. And if, there's, if you just let them be, they will go out by themselves. Uh, you cannot use them for like this one. If you, if you don't do anything for half an hour uh, when the charcoal is burning, uh, it will just you know, slow down and will not even keep your water up to temperature. Um, and th so there's a lot of work that goes into it and you need to know what you're doing and you need to prepare in advance. So when you have a tea uh, ceremony or a tea session with friends, um, probably you need like half an hour, then you need to start your charcoal uh, in advance, um, half an hour or an hour. Um, the charcoal itself uh, that I use most is uh, either coconut husk or olive pit charcoal. I actually like to use them both. Uh, the olive pit charcoal uh, burns more, uh, burns hotter, burns longer. It's also the most expensive, uh, more expensive, not the most expensive charcoal that you can get, uh, but it's more expensive than coconut husk. Um, and I just fill the rest with coconut husk charcoal and uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, one of the major downsides that I haven't talked about uh, is actually one of the scariest. Um, neither of uh, the other ways of heating water was dangerous, and this one is, in that uh, charcoal uh, creates um, carbon monoxide in the air. And if you do not ventilate your space um, and it gets to high levels, you will basically die. So that is obviously not a good thing to have during a tea session. Uh, so I always carry a, a carbon monoxide meter with me when I'm using charcoal. Uh, I try to keep things ventilated um, and also you know, keep an eye on the meter. Uh, obviously when it goes off, it's not nice because it's a very loud sound. So I, I keep my eye on it and open doors when necessary. And even then uh, I remember one time that that even wasn't enough uh, there was no wind outside and there was no airflow here in, the, in the house. So I literally needed to take my charcoal stove and put it outside. Um, otherwise the levels would be too high. And um, yeah, that's not nice. So yeah, charcoal is very nice, but um, has some downsides to it. I would um, definitely recommend using other stuff first, get acquainted with that. And maybe you know 
fiddle around with charcoal when you're uh, further along. And um, yeah, start with just yourself. Don't bring guests over and, uh, you know, have a tea session where this thing goes out and, you know, you're scrambling to get something else like an alcohol burner uh, or just keep it beside it, which I, I do actually as well. Um, yeah, so this is uh, basically uh, the whole lineup of uh, heat sources that I wanted to talk about. And again, I uh, the one that I use the most is the infrared and the alcohol. Uh, I think that you get the best of uh, both these things. Uh, you don't use a lot of alcohol and um, yeah, it's just actually pretty nice. And you don't have to, you know, keep doors open in winter. Uh, with the charcoal, but it's nicest to use. So, with that out of the way, uh, let me check. Yeah, we'll go into the kettles. Um, the kettles are just basically, I wanted to show off some kettles that I have, uh, talk a little bit about the materials, um, but it's, uh, let me just have some tea. My mouth is getting dry. And you already see the first kettle. Uh, I'll again, uh, nah, I'll just begin. Um, this is a glass kettle, as you have seen. The cool thing about it is that it's obviously transparent and you can see what's going on. And if I put this uh, infrared plate on, in a couple of seconds, you will see bubbles uh, in the kettle, which is nice if you're beginning with tea, um, because there are some teas that need like 70 degrees water or 90 degrees or something like that. Uh, obviously you can get an electric kettle when with the push of a button, you have 90 degrees water. Uh, if you're starting uh, sort of to get into more tea ceremonies, tea sessions, blah, uh, blah, blah, then um, it's nice to have a, a kettle set up like this and to actually get to know a kettle. Uh, out of all the kettles that I will show you in just a minute, uh, of every one of them, I know the sound that it makes when it's boiling. So I don't need to uh, check, but I also, of most of them, know the sound when they're, you know, a, around 90 degrees and most of them around 80. I'm not that good uh, with 70 because the teas that I drink mostly are darker. So I, I don't get the 70 degrees mark uh, a lot. But uh, with this kettle, you can actually see what's going on. And uh, oh, it actually cooled down quite a bit, uh, but then you can see tiny bubbles coming from it. And then you know that it's uh, uh, there's this whole chart, look it up online. I think the Chinese have a whole guide of, they call it um, string of pearls water, which is I think 60 or something like that. And then you have um, fish eye water where the bubbles get, you know, as big as a fish, fish eye. And then it's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure again, but um, maybe 80 or 90 degrees. It's actually making some sound. I hope it, the microphone is picking it up as well, but you can see, if you were here, you could see some action going on. I don't think, oh, you, you, you'll you see some bleeps uh, on there, which is nice. So uh, yeah, glass kettle is very nice for beginners. Um, the, the downside is, is that the water that it makes is not that good. Um, the glass doesn't add anything to the water and it, for some teas, and I'm not uh, sure yet which what is the, the denominator of why this, some teas are like way worse in a glass kettle than in another kettle. Uh, I think mostly because I'm very used to having a certain type of tea. It's making a lot of noise, I'll put it off. Uh, mostly because I know a certain type of tea with another kettle and then I think like, ooh, this is a bit jarring. So then I'll switch kettles, but I actually use them a lot. And I think that they're uh, very easy to use. Um, you don't need to clean them up uh, like some of the other options, which we'll go into right now. So this is um, a clay kettle, um, which I also use a lot. Uh, th this one is sort of my main kettle when I uh, do tea ceremonies. Uh, it's pretty big, which is nice. 
and this actually adds something to the water. So it makes not like perfect water, but yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, it's nothing else I can say about it, but other than that, it's pretty nice to use. Um, and we just doubled the price. So this glass kettle is pretty cheap. And this one is, I don't know, something like 100 euros plus. Uh, so we're already into the 100 euros plus range and we'll only go up from here. And the next one is this baby. So this is a, a gong fu kettle. So this is primarily used for gong fu tea. Um, it's pretty small. It is from Yishin clay, which is a whole different topic, which I'm not qualified to talk about. Uh, but let's just say that it's a special clay from China, which has been linked to tea for hundreds of years. And um, yeah, this makes wonderful water, especially for darker teas. I actually haven't used this in a long time, but it's, yeah, it's gorgeous. You can see that the water I use has a lot of calcium in it. So there's a little bit of a calcium uh, thing going on, but um, yeah, it's just a wonderful kettle. This kettle in particular is a little bit of a diva. It, it wants to be handled properly. Otherwise there will be water everywhere. If you just sort of gently try to pour, the water will go down and just all over your tea table. So. This has a, a yeah, special characteristics, which I actually like in a kettle that it's, a, I don't know, a bit weird, just like me. So we'll go into the next one. Um, what I didn't say, like in price range between this one and this one, we've already, uh, we've also doubled in price. So this one, I don't know, it's like a hundred something. And this is maybe three or four. Not sure, it's not available anymore, so you cannot get it. This one is, I see that you cannot see it. This is a Tetsubin. So these are Japanese kettles uh, made of iron. And iron obviously um, is something that rusts. So there's a, a whole lot of rust going on in, the, in this kettle, which is good. Um, and this will add a lot of taste to your water. Uh, a lot of iron taste in with some teas that is uh, very, very enjoyable with the darker teas, with the show uh, with the darker oolongs, uh, maybe use some black tea uh, here and there. Um, it is wonderful to use and will add something extra. And also because this is iron, um, there's again, uh, the same as with charcoal, it, in a weird way, the, the, the water gets hotter and it permeates more into the tea, which is yeah, just wonderful um, and is very good with those types of tea. Uh, price range is, um, yeah, th this one is an antique. So this one is actually really expensive. Uh, you can get new ones um, for around four or 500 if they're made properly. Uh, you can even get some on eBay, which are cheaper, uh, sort of antique. Uh, yeah, on eBay, you can get scammed. Uh, pretty easily. I know of uh, some people uh, that have bought Tetsugans for like 200 euros, which are actually pretty nice. So uh, you can get a steal from it, but oh, it's a whole different topic and um, yeah, whole different workshop. And again, I'm not qualified to do it. I'm very lucky that I have uh, some friends uh, who bought this kettle for me and actually know what they're doing. So um, I just wanted to show it and that it's... Uh, it's good for some particular types of tea. And now the last one, which is a silver kettle. So this kettle is made, oh, this kettle is made of pure silver. And again, this one is antique. So don't ask me the price. I actually don't know the price because I got the Tetsubin and the uh, silver one as a deal. But um, I think, you can get at some shops, you can get a silver kettle. This one is pretty big for a silver kettle. This is over a liter, maybe 1.3 liters. Um, something like that would set you back uh, when it's new, I don't know, 1300 euros. Uh, nice thing about Tetsubins and silver kettles is that they can be repaired. If I drop this one, 
um, it will be broken forever. I cannot repair it. If I drop my uh, silver one, I would first cry for two to three months. Uh, but <laughs> after I'm over that, then uh, yeah, it can easily get uh, or easily it can get fixed. And um, what I think is nice also about silver is that it's, uh, uh, it is still pure silver. So when the zombie apocalypse comes, um, I can still sell this kettle for the amount of silver that it's worth. So even though uh, if you get a new one, um, uh, the, the kettle is 1300 euros, uh, 300 of that is silver. So you'll always get your amount in silver back, which is, uh, I think, a nice deal. And what I didn't talk about is actually the tea. Um, it just gets a, a real sparkly element, a real clean, uh, almost minty uh, uh, flavor to the tea, uh, which is really nice, uh, especially in the lighter teas. But also I've used it with darker teas and uh, yeah, with darker teas, I like it a lot as well. I, I actually use this one uh, quite a lot. Maybe not in winter because it is a little bit more cooling, but um, yeah, just very nice to use. So um, this was it. I'm uh, 31 minutes in, so I think I did a nice job. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'll, I'm here drinking some tea with you. Uh, and I wanted to thank the, um, the people that started Nomad Tea Festival uh, for having some patience with me. I've uh, had some relationship issues uh, lately, mainly that I don't have a relationship anymore. And um, they were very uh, patient with me. So uh, yeah, thank you for that. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please post them in chat. I'm not sure where I can see the chat, but uh, ah, I see the chat. <laughs> A lot of thanks or well, thank you for for watching obviously we have a question about uh, from shandong smith uh wonderful talk one question how to control the temperature if using glass pot for beginners um yeah that is a good question let me try and put away some of these kettles so i can actually see you um so yeah uh if you see the kettle now so i know that it's not boiling fully um i would guess that it's around 70 degrees or something right uh 70 80. um yeah just by looking at the bubbles and you can actually look this up online uh i think that there is pearl eye fish eye uh dragon water um just all these chinese names for uh, how big the bubbles are uh, and uh, what temperature the kettle then is. So now we're getting closer to a, to a rolling boil. So I'll just put this off and then have some tea. So you can see where your water is by looking at the bubbles. I actually want to do uh, YouTube. I also do YouTube videos. I have a store as well, um, which you can check out. It's Leaves with Hugs. Um, and I have some, I think, pretty funny YouTube videos about tea. And I actually want to do one about glass kettles. Uh, and I actually bought one of those infrared uh, temperature uh, guns. Um, so I could really measure uh, the water. But uh, yeah, you can also do that. Um, so Donali Yeats. I hope that I pronounced it correctly. Uh, says, thank you, Altmar. Love your kettles. Are they all fine to use on infrared? No. Um, or wait a minute. Is that good? Mm. No, no, they are not. The Yixing one is not for infrared. Yixing has actually um, uh, one of the qualities of the clay. There is some... Um, uh, I forget the name, but there is this uh, element in there which expands and uh, retracts with heat. And if you uh, use it on um, an infrared plate, the shock of the temperature, because there's a, a big temperature difference, uh, it can actually crack the kettle. Um, 
and even using it at a proper way can crack the kettle over time. So that's why I also said like this kettle, I, pro I probably won't give this one to my grandchildren or something. Like all the rest, I think I will. <laughs> you know, I hope to create a legacy of great teas and uh, great uh, tea stuffs when I'm, when I'm gone. But this one probably won't be in there. This one will break over time. Uh, it's just the nature of the clay that there's stuff in there which uh, will, um, yeah, eventually weaken the kettle because uh, it's been heated up. So the way that I uh, use this one is just over the alcohol flame and only hot water gets into this kettle. So only uh, um, boiling water. Uh, that's the way this kettle stays alive for now. So let's see. Um, so Eric Glass asks uh, uh, if the Yishin kettle can uh, be on uh, the infrared heater. Well, I uh, already told that. Uh, Yan Chung says, I saw an advert on t TV for a Zori Rushi electric water boiler that will send a message to your smartphone. <laughs> When you pour yourself some water for tea, um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I don't think I need a kettle that sends me an, a message to my smartphone that I'm drinking tea. I probably already know it. So Newton Shaw asks, um, what would be the best way to get rid of the rust inside the iron kettle? Um, is it safe to drink the rust inside? Uh, I actually looked this up um, because you're also getting extra iron out of, uh, if you drink from a tetsubin, there's extra iron in your water, uh, which is actually good. And I think that the um, uh, amount of iron that your body can handle is very high. Um, so I don't think that you can get, you know, a lethal dose of rust uh, that is, yeah, obviously, if you get like two kilos of rust into your system, that's not a good thing. But um, I, I don't think that drinking from a rusty kettle will get you there. Um, but drinking from a rusty kettle will um, get too much of a flavor in there, which is not nice. Uh, to clean it, I actually never done this myself, but I have heard from people that they just use a scrubber and it's just hours and hours of scrubbing uh, when a kettle is really rusty. So, um, and if there's just a little bit rust, just a rush and, you know, keep scrubbing. Uh, don't use like solvent or cleaning agent or, you know, stuff like that that will get into the kettle. So that's, um, with my limited knowledge, all I can say about it. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Um... <laughs> oh, I see Yulia says <laughs> no scrubbing boiled sencha in it, which is also true. I, I know Yulia, so <laughs> good to have you here. Which I forgot. Yeah, you can also do that. But I actually know that if if the um, the rust is too much, that you need to scrub it. But um, yeah. That, <laughs> that's also a good thing. Um, uh, I think this is the last question. Uh, can you describe how exactly does the silver kettle improve your water? Um, yeah, like I said, it's diff difficult for me to, to quantify this, but um, yeah, it just brings an extra sparkle, uh, a sort of a cooling effect. Um, and um, yeah, it just uplifts the tea that I'm drinking at that time. Uh, just a little bit. Um, and I would also like to say that these these uh, changers are minor. It's not that if you drink out of this uh, silver kettle that you probably that you suddenly have a tea session which is, I don't know, 10 times better than normal. It's just a small tweak that, um, uh, you know, you need to appreciate and sort of be silent with, otherwise you won't notice it. If you're just, you know, watching YouTube, sitting behind your uh, computer with your headphones on, um, half watching your phone, then you won't notice it. Uh, 
I see that some people are using vinegar vinegar to clean their tattoos. I never heard of it, but yeah, obviously vinegar gets rid of rust. I'm just not sure if that will uh, be nice to your cattle. So I'm not qualified to answer uh, that. <laughs> Well, I think that we are at 7.46 already. Um, yeah, again, thank you very much for uh, coming to this talk. I enjoyed it very much. I hope to be here uh, somewhere uh, next time. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful uh, next few sessions and I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.